the opening, the closing of her life was now beginning. Uma Devi for 10 years had been the second most powerful person in the kingdom of the green meadows. But now everything was ending. The king was furious at her. The palace guards burst into her locked door, seized her, beat her with sticks, broke her nose, knocked a few teeth out, then carried her out and put her on a horse and they rode into the jungle and then they dropped the queen in a ditch and for the final humiliation they poured manure over her. For many hours the ex-queen Uma Devi was unconscious. The ants started crawling over her. One day passed and she was still unconscious. But luck started to change for her. Two pilgrims, a man and a woman, <coughs> stumbled upon what appeared to be a lifeless body, but upon closer look they discovered she was still breathing. They were actually going on a pilgrimage to see a lady saint who lived in a cave. The lady saint was named Lakshmi Priya. They remembered a few years ago, the lady hermit, hermitess had cured them of some disease. So, they picked up the still breathing body of the unconscious lady and slowly made their way to see the hermitess in the cave. They did not look directly at the eyes of Lakshmi Priya because the eyes were two balls of fire and no one could look her in the eyes. Instead, they brought a traditional offering to her and they said, please, holy saint, cure this unconscious lady. Then, the saint said, you have the offering? They said, yes. So the man and woman poured some container of milk on her feet. Then Lakshmi Priya said, children, drink the milk offered and your wits shall be fulfilled and this unconscious lady will survive. So they drank the milk and left. But Uma Devi was still unconscious. The next day Uma Devi woke up and said, where am I? And the old lady saint said, you're in my cave, child. You now belong to me. Then the ex-queen said, why did they beat me? Why has all this happened to me? I never did anything wrong. For 10 years, I was a good wife to the king. The only thing I did not succeed in was I did not bring any children into birth. Then Lakshmi Priya said, Child, that's not the real reason 
which caused you to be beaten severely by the palace guards. Lakshmi Priya then put her hand on the chest of Uma Devi, and all of a sudden, Uma Devi had a vision. She saw herself as a young teenage princess in another kingdom, in the kingdom of the Blue Mountain. And one afternoon, an old lady came to the palace and was just begging for alms. And this young teenage girl said, get away, you lazy lady. We don't want any beggars here. But the lady saint persisted in begging for alms. Then the teenage princess told the palace god, beat her and throw her away. Get her out of the palace. I don't want her ever to come into the kingdom of the Blue Mountain. And so they beat Lakshmi Priya. But Lakshmi Priya smiled all along during the beating and thought, there will be karma between me and this teenage girl. Things have to be resolved. Then Uma Devi came out of the trance vision and she said, now I realize what I have done to you. I am very sorry. And Lakshmi Priya said, that was one reason. Then the apparent outward reason was the king was afraid because you did not produce any royal offspring. Neighboring kingdoms would have to uh, invade him. And because of that, he raised taxes to have a bigger army to defend his kingdom. And the people were not happy. But that's all the past. This you should forget. You cannot go back to the kingdom now. Instead, you will live with me and I will train you. And so the old lady saint began a process of training the exiled ex-queen. She said, now in the evening you get up at midnight and you concentrate on the full moon. Try not to close your eyes. Just look and look. And so the ex-queen Uma Devi did this for a month. Then the old lady hermit said, now in the daytime you look at the flying birds and you feel you are flying out of your head. Feel you are ascending above the body and you do this for one month. And she mastered this process for one month. Then the old lady saint said, you burn a fire. And she burned the fire in the cave and said, you look into the flames. And she concentrated on looking into the flames. And all of a sudden she felt a fire within her third eye. Meanwhile, the king decided to remarry and he went to the kingdom of the Blue Mountain and he picked out a queen named Gayatri and everything was going good. Gayatri produced two boys, they were twins, but there was a problem when they were produced is there was a big wind and the big wind blew out the candle and no one knew which one of the two boys was the older or the younger. Anyway, they named them Ramanand and Vishnupada. And so everything went perfect and the king was very happy and 15 years passed. And then the king said to the queen, the new queen, let us celebrate the 15th birthday of our two sons. Let's hold a big military parade. And so they entered a stadium and all the people of the kingdom watched and the soldiers paraded, some on horses, some on elephants, 
some just plain foot soldiers, and all of a sudden, the king, Surya Prakash, had very fast reflexes. He saw some glint of steel, and he ducked because one of the soldiers took a dagger and threw it at the king and screamed, you killed my sister, you demon dog. But the king ducked, and the dagger missed him. However, the dagger flew into the heart of his queen, Gayatri, and she bled to death. Then the king's soldiers captured this fellow who threw the dagger, and they found out that he actually was a spy from the kingdom where the original queen, Uma Devi, was. And King Surya Prakash was filled with rage, and he mobilized his army and declared war on the kingdom of the Blue Mountain. And they smashed through fortress after fortress. And finally, the soldiers of the rival kingdom of the Blue Mountain were being defeated and running away. But the king of the Blue Mountain, Megana, did not run. And so he was the only remaining soldier of the enemy kingdom. And he had a huge mace. And he challenged King Surya Prakash to a duel. Surya Prakash had a long sword, but the other king had a mace. And they fought for a few minutes. And then at the crucial moment, Meganath's mace smashed down on the head of Surya Prakash at the same moment that Surya Prakash's sword went straight into the heart of the rival king, and they both slumped to the ground. The rival king was dead, but Surya Prakash was not dead. He was unconscious and paralyzed. So his soldiers brought him back to the royal palace in the kingdom of the Green Meadow. And they said, how are we going to cure the king? He is unconscious, he is paralyzed, but he is not dead. And the two sons are too young to rule the kingdom. Then some of his advisors said, we think 35 miles from here, there was an old hermitess. She cures people, but she demands milk. Let us go immediately to the cave and get the aid of this hermitess. Since time had passed, the old hermitess, Lakshmi Priya, had died, but she transmitted her spiritual powers to Uma Devi. And Uma Devi now took the role of the hermitess saint. So, the king's messengers, finally after one day of hard riding, came into the cave, and they brought milk with them. And they poured it on the feet of Uma Devi. And she said, Child, children, I will bless you. What do you want? And they said, You must come to the royal palace immediately because our king is unconscious and paralyzed. You must heal him. And Uma Devi said, Are you sure you want me to come? They said, Yes, yes. Then Uma Devi said, but you did not say go. Did you tell me that I should leave? They said, no, we want you to come. Then she said, do you want me to stay forever? And they said, yes, yes, stay forever. And she said, are you sure you don't want me to go? They said, no, you must come and stay forever. She said, okay, under that condition, your wish shall be fulfilled. And... Uma Devi came to the house. She took a look at the king. She recognized the king, but the king's eyes were closed because he was unconscious. And she started to say some mantras. Om Hrim Hum Swaha. Om Hrim Hum Mahadevi Swaha. 
And gradually, the king opened up his eyes, and he regained consciousness. But he could not look Uma Devi, who was now in the guise of a lady hermit, he could not look her in the eyes, because the eyes were full of fire. So he said, you have healed me, but I need guidance. I have no wife. My wife was murdered. You have to look after Ramanan and Vishnu Pada. You have to train these two boys. Then she said, do you want me to stay? Do you want me to go? He said, no, no, you stay. You stay in the palace. You train my two sons. And she agreed. She taught them politics. She taught them economic policy. She taught them military training. Basically, she taught them everything under the sun. And this went on for five years. And the king grew old. And just as he was dying, he had one thought. I wonder where my first wife was. Maybe I was too harsh on her. Is she dead? Is she alive? Who is this lady saint? Could this lady saint be? Could she be Uma Devi? I don't know. And so he died, and he never knew the mystery of the lady saint. Then the lady saint said to the two children, Ramanand, you will rule over this kingdom, the kingdom of the Blue Mountain, and Vishnu Pada, you will go to the kingdom of the, wait, made a mistake. Ramanand, you will rule over this kingdom, the kingdom of the Green Meadow, and Vishnupada, you will go to the kingdom of the Blue Mountain, and you will both rule as allies. And so they did. So, Uma Devi was very happy. She had achieved her mission, and she was detached. She had forgiven the king, and she continued to give advice to both the kings. So her life was complete because she had achieved spiritual opening. That's it.